take a heart that's broken, make it over again. But I know a man who can. Well, hello, friends and neighbors, brothers and sisters. Thank you for stopping by right here at the Gospel wild. Music Jukebox. Hey, I'm your host, Bishop, Brother Eddie Chaney, saying we love you and God loves you. Hey, remember, you can drop your prayer request off right there in the chat box. We print those out every night and pray over those before we leave the studio, my friends. Now, if you would like to have live prayer with me, feel free to call 1-931-248-0070. Anytime, day or night, I consider it an honor and a privilege to pray with you and for you, my friend. Now remember, we are now airing live twice a day. Yes, that's right, Monday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. Central Time, right here. Hey, and then we're back again in the evening at 7 p.m. Central Time. So be sure if you can to stop on by and let's just worship the Lord is spirit and truth together, my friends. Now, get ready as we pray that God continue to bless you and your family as you continue to be a blessing to others. Let's just join the regular scheduled program. God bless and thank you once again, my friends. Or make the lane to walk again. God bless you. Welcome into the Gospel Music Jude Box. Hey, I can't get in the chat room tonight. It won't let me open it. Our internet is really bad right now. It's raining real hard here. So I don't know if it'll even stay on long enough for me to make the announcements. But I'm dealing with the, I'm right in the middle of a battle here myself tonight, friends. I've got three emails from three different people saying that I'm causing confusion uh, with my radio scheduling that they can't uh, join me for being with others. And I, I'm like, hey, I'm, I've been doing this a long time at 7 o'clock, but, I mean, I don't want to cause no confusion. So what I'm going to do, um, you know, it's been on my heart to talk about, you know, um, and bring forth to the body of Christ. And I've been doing that in, in the word that God's been giving me uh, about we need to be uh, taking heed to ourselves uh, because there's false prophets in the land. And, and they really are. If you believe we're in the end times, then you know what I'm talking about. And if you're born again, you know that we are at war. And the devil's real, my friends. But what I need to do, I've got to finish up this conversation with, with these individuals and get this out of my way. Uh, seems like it's been a day of war all day, which every day is a day of war. We know the devil's real. I need your prayers because... Um, you know, there's a lot of things going on that the devil's trying to stop me and my wife. We have went full-time ministry. Uh, we've had two uh, ministers that were supposed to be here tonight. One of them uh, said they got sick. The other one we've not heard from. We've, we've had a lot of people tell us a lot of things. Uh, but since we've stepped out to go full-time, we sure haven't seen a lot of a lot of the support. But anyway, we're going to continue on. But I've got to deal with these issues 
I, I apologize, but I had to come on and let you know that um, I just want to share with you a couple verses real quick. If you would go over there to the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 28 down to about 31, there if you'll, you'll take heed to the word of God. He says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Now, just right there tells you that God... We know that God sets pastors and God sets people in authority. And uh, as a called pastor of Sons of Thunder Ministry and a, and a bishop is nothing more than an overseer. And I help oversee different ministries and have been asked to work with different ministries. Some of them I get to continue with and some of them I don't over time. That's all in God's hands and those individuals' hands. But uh, we, we've got to know right here that God is, is using people to feed his flock. Uh, it's right there in the Word of God. He says, look at verse 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, uh, not sparing the flock. Also, verse 30, also uh, of your own selves shall men arise speaking uh, perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Uh, look at verse 31. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every." one night and day with tears i've been crying for a long time about this and um you know i'm going to continue to cry about it that there are people that call you friend that are not your friend there are people that uh absolutely will come around you and in time listen i listen i've been told i've been told this i can tell you when i started working with different people on the radio oh they told me they puffed me up with big high polluting words man and they would tell me things they would say well we're not gonna you know we're gonna do ours but we're gonna do it this way and we don't want to interfere and all this that's not what happened the fruit the the tree is known by the fruit it bears so just read the word of god apply it to your heart and ask yourself why is this not being taught why is it not being preached why is not the pastor standing up and warning the flock that we're in the end days and the wolf is among us. The, the false prophets and the Antichrist spirits are here. They're already here. And people are going to them to the groves. So be much in prayer for yourselves. Keep watch. Stay in the word. Stay obedient to God. And uh, pray for the men and women of God that God has put in your life. The other verse I'd leave with you tonight would be Matthew chapter uh, 7 there. You can go look through verses 13 through 27. And talking about entering in the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be with which go in thereat. And then verse 14 says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Um, you know, beware of the false prophet there in verse 15, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. And uh, then he goes on to tell you, Do men gather grapes of thorns and figs of thistles? Verse 17 says, Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth uh, good fruit. Look at verse 19. And every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Look at what it says. It's telling you plain how to know the difference, but people don't want to pay attention, don't seem like, because they like their ears tickled. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not an ear-tickling preacher, and I'm not going to back up off of the truth. I'm going to keep on doing what God has called me to do, and uh, because, listen, I don't want nobody's blood on my hands when I stand before God. You can read on down there, and, and you'll see uh, if you read all the way down to verse 27. And just know that we love you. Pray for us as we're in the heat of the battle once again. Uh, we're we're, we're uh, definitely making the ma the devil madder than hell is hot. And But I, I'm, I never want to come amongst my friends and tell them to choose. I encourage you to obey God. If, if, if you're listening to other programs, that's great. I encourage that. You, you go here all and hold fast to that which is good. Hold on to the truth and throw the garbage in the garbage can. Now, that's what I advise you to do. Hold on to the truth. And his people, if you belong to God and you're his sheep, you know his voice and no other voice will you follow, my friend. Know that. We encourage you to be faithful, seek, study, pray fast, and obey God. Please say a little prayer for us tonight as we deal with many issues. And, uh, you know, I didn't have a word for tonight burning. Uh, we had 
two different uh, offers of ministers that were going to be here. So I didn't really um, seek the Lord today on that word. And, and I know I can preach at any time. Those of you that know me know I got the gift to gab, amen, that I love to talk about the Lord. I mean, I, I love to warn people that uh, we better be getting ready and getting right, you know. I mean, I'll leave you with this right here just in a few minutes. Think of this. Imagine that your church needed a pastor. You know, say say you, you was going to pray in a pastor, and God's going to raise one up amongst you, you believe, and you're getting ready to, you know, get a pastor. Well, you know, I'm going to describe two kinds of pastors. You may want to go back and listen to this archive or write this down if you take a notion to or if you even want to. But um, you get to if you want to around here. That's to say an amen. But uh, let's, let me give you a description of, um, let's go with uh, Pastor One first. Here's, here's you're going to have, Two pastors you could, you know, pick between. And you just make a little quick note and watch what happens. And because uh, I'm going to ask you which one would you think. But here's here's Pastor One. Now, listen, Pastor One that's come before you, he knows how to inspire hope. Man, he, he he's, he's telling you he knows how to inspire hope. He is committed to people in need. He's committed. He is he is committed to the people in need. He, he counsels prisoners and, and uh, juvenile delinquents. Man, he starts job placement centers everywhere that he can. He's really wanting to make a difference in the community. He opens rest homes and homes for, 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 the, for, the, for the homeless. And, boy, he's just right in there now. Uh, my God, he has a, 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 a works on a health clinic, trying to get that going for the low-income people. He organizes uh, like vocational training centers so they can learn the Word of God. Uh, he provides free legal aid. He opens community centers. He, he, he preaches about God. He creates a woman uh, Christian community uh, worship center. Uh, his, his membership quickly uh, grows. Uh, every time you go, it seems to be adding numbers. Okay, now that's number one. So you can make you a little note of that. Boy, he's he's in there. Amen. Now here's pastor number two. Well, right off the bat, he's too um, rough. He's too plain. He's too he's too rough. He he speaks loud um, and the truth uh, to an embarrassing point. And attendance drops every time you go to his service. It seems like people are, numbers are not growing. It's getting less. Um, Oh, and uh, when you showed up one Sunday, he wasn't even there because he couldn't even preach because he was so depressed that he just, that he just couldn't preach. Uh, Oh, yeah, he also, this is pastor number two. He he began to pray that some members would leave his ministry because they were so set on their own agenda wanting to do their own thing. They wa- they wouldn't take instruction. They wouldn't heed to the Word of God. So he started praying that they would just either get in or get out. Uh, he helped uh, answer his own prayer because he started suggesting that members consider another church. And whether it's go on, go, go, you know, find you somewhere. If you want your ears tickled, you know, go over there, you know, similar to saying. He saw the church grow from less uh, this way, less instead of more, from 40 down to 20. Uh, now remember, you're going to pick between these two. Which one you would rather have, pastor your church or community? Whatever you was, if you're looking, this is a just a suggestion, just a thing for you to look at. It's a food for thought to stir the gift that lies within you. Um, sometimes he felt uh, he couldn't, could not possibly face another Sunday. He cried to God to give him strength. Uh, he preaches about the blood of Christ. He preaches the death, the burial, and the resurrection. He cries loud to watch for the wolf. Okay, that's pastor number two. Which one would you choose? Make you a little note and just put why. It's an interesting thing to do when you're, when you're, when you're just checking where you're at, you know, and where people are around you. Because if you look... And uh, you would uh, take notice that uh, there in Acts 20, verse 28 down to 31, we're to take heed therefore unto ourselves and to all the flock over that which the Holy Ghost has made us overseers to feed the church of God which hath purchased, which he had purchased, 
with his own blood. Um, we're, we're to warn people about this. And people get so mad at us here at Sons of Thunder Ministry and the Gospel Music Jukebox, and they even point fingers, specifically calling me and sending me emails saying that we're talking about them. Well, if the shoe fits you, you are to do something about it. Repent and come out. Quit tickling people's ears. Quit preaching a false doctrine and preach the truth. Bottom line. But but just wondering which which pastor you think would be the right pastor as I give the example. Just just out of curiosity, a little a little test. Because we are to test the spirits that come at us. People don't do that no more. It's hard to teach because people say you're not supposed to judge. You know, <laughs> you give a righteous judgment. The word of God is what you're going by. But um you know, when you look in First John chapter 4, uh, verse 1 there, Beloved, uh, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. This is a truth from a man of God to the people of God. Now, you can do with it what you would like, but the word of God is truth. And there is false prophets. And, uh, man, they're after you. I mean, they're listen, they're raving wolves in sheep's clothing. It's very true. You know you know the fruit. A lot of people don't want to say nothing because they know it's going to cost them. It's going to cost them. They're going to be talked about, lied on, made fun of, put down, spit on, pushed to the side, run over top of them. And people don't want to go through that. They just rather surrender. Uh, the flesh would rather just surrender and just sit there and say, ah, you know, we'll pray for them. But then I'm going to tell you the truth. Unless you're led by the Spirit of God, then the flesh is leading you. And if the flesh is leading you, it'll lead you to things to satisfy the flesh. Which means you're not crucified. You've not crucified self. You're not dead to Christ. You're not denying yourself, picking up your cross, and following out of Jesus. All right, guys. Know that I couldn't get in the chat room. I apologize for that. But the internet, I don't even know if it's on, to tell you the truth. So just pray for me by faith. It's been raining here. Our TV picture's been in and out. If my wife gets on later, uh, maybe she can tell you. I don't know if she can get in or not. I, I don't have no idea. But anyway, pray for me. Uh, I'll try to be back on later tonight and uh, kind of update on, on the situation. But right now, I've got to finish this. Uh, I was hoping we would have one of those ministers here to turn them loose so I could deal with this off to the side and not interrupt our regular scheduled programming. But, uh, you know, it is what it is, and uh, I, I need to finish getting this dealt with, even though uh, they're going to twist it all around anyway. So pray for me. I desire your prayers. Amen. But I told every man if he ever had questions, I'd give him answers. Uh, now, I won't play patty cake when they start talking foolish or just hollering at me and won't listen to me and go ahead and say, well, if you said and I never said and they keep saying that, then I end the conversation. I, I'm not going to I'm not going to debate this. I'm not going to. The truth is I preach the truth. Go back and listen to the archives. And uh, if you're one of them that I've called your name out and you're guilty of sin, just repent. If not, hey, pray for the man of God. But know that we love you. We'll continue to love you. We pray for you. Hope you can join back in tomorrow night at se or in the morning at 9.30 uh, a.m. Central Time on our regular scheduled programming. But uh, I'm limited on laborers here. I don't have a lot of help, and I'm dealing with multiple things. So be much in prayer for me. And we're going to do the same for you, my friends. We pray. Please leave your prayer request in the chat room if you have any or if you'd like for me to pray for them. If not, that's fine. We understand. You know, you, you obey God. That's what we encourage you. Obey God. Amen. Obey God. May God bless you, my friend, and your family as you continue to bless others. And we'll see you, Lord's a willing. Uh, everything's all right in the morning at 930 right here at the Gospel Music Jute Box. And... Uh, just keep praying because God's good. And besides him, hey, there is none other, my friend. God is awesome. I'm telling you. Do you know how to describe awesome? <laughs> Food for thought. Yeah, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. All right, guys. We love you. We'll see you next time. So be blessed. And thank you for the prayers. I do appreciate those. Thank you.